Hi, um, this is an instructional video on how to dunk. For those of you who may only just be able to touch the rim, plyometric training is a major key in the process to getting that first jam. Plyometric training is used to increase your vertical leap via strengthening your leg muscles and increasing your explosiveness. This basic workout time lapse you are currently watching is of a high intensity plyometric workout you can do, which is part of the Vertshock program. This workout consists of a warm up, 400 meter sprint, and 120 skips, major workout, bench jumps. This is when you jump from side to side over a bench continuously. Do this for three repetitions of 20 with about five seconds break between each set. Seated mat jumps. The seated mat jump will vary dependent on your vertical leap when you start. This tar targets your explosiveness and works on your core muscles. This must be done in three reps of 10 with a minute to a minute and a half of rest between each set. The third element of this workout targets your quads and your ability to continue to operate at a maximum intensity whilst changing direction. The exercise is a 180 squat jump. You are required to get as low as possible and then explode whilst turning 180 degrees mid jump and then landing in a squat ready to explode again. This is done in three reps of 20. After roughly four to five weeks of this workout, the majority of athletes should be able to get a light jam at the minimum. The first dunk we look at in this video is the basic one foot two handed dunk. This is a very simple dunk and the majority of basketball players from year 12 onwards would probably have this in their list of dunks to perform in a game. From the angle we can view this dunk we see that my back is straight in the final steps not leaning forwards or backwards which is forgotten about in most cases. Just before takeoff, you can see that my foot is at an almost 90 degree angle in comparison with the rest of, of my leg. The flexion in this movement means that when I put my foot back down, I am ready to explode and my muscles will extend and push me forward towards the basket. In regards to holding the ball, a two-handed dunk is probably the easiest because it means that you don't have to be able to palm the ball in order to control it in the air. The second dunk is the basic one hand, one foot dunk. This features all the same steps as the previous dunk apart from the takeoff. The way I cradle and then keep my hand on top of the ball is basically to benefit people who can't palm the ball. This means that you can keep control of the ball and keep momentum without having to worry about the ball slipping out of your grip. The next dunk is called reverse. This is when you dunk the ball moving away from the ring and actually put the ball in behind you. This dunk features all the major keys from the previous one footed dunk, but once in the air the idea is to angle your body in a way so that you can almost still see the ring over your shoulder and have your hands above your head ready to pull the ball through the hoop. This one will take a while to get right purely based on the judgement and timing, but will come naturally once you get the dunk once or twice. The next few dunks you will see are alley-oop dunks. The first dunk is a one-handed alley-oop. The throw is easily the most important part of the dunk because you aren't carrying the ball with you as you run towards the basket. Your mind can focus on catching the ball in the air instead of keeping control during the lead up. The throw should be executed almost exactly the same way as a regular jump shot. This creates an arc and a backspin on the ball so when it hits the floor it rises up not forwards more. Timing is essential in order to pull the oop off and connect with the ball mid-jump. The previous steps follow on with the next alley-oop, which will be done off two feet with a two-hand finish. Follow the same steps for the previous oop, but when capitalising, you must put emphasis on stretching out to catch the ball at height and then finish at the rack strong. The next dunk is a different type of alley-oop. 
instead of throwing the ball, you will actually bounce it off the backboard. This dunk is most commonly used in game because you can maintain your speed and elevation. The timing for this oop again is essential. The main thing to focus on is hitting the middle top corner of the backboard and always throw underarm because that the way that the ball continues up in the air whilst you're trying to catch it. This dunk is purely about trying to get distance to your jump. Before you take off, you need to follow the same steps as any regular dunk. You need to angle your foot at almost 90 degrees with your leg before you take off and keep your back as straight as possible. Extend during the jump to maximize the amount of flight and distance you get and try to finish with as much emphasis as possible to increase the chance of the ball going in regardless of how far you jump. The 360 dunks are probably the hardest dunk to do on any height rim. Getting the footwork and rotation right before the dunk is key. The majority of people can't get their head around a 360 dunk because the rotation of your body ties in with the rotation of the ball in your hand. Two-handed dunks are generally the easiest in regards to keeping control of the ball. So when you take off with your right foot or left foot forwards ready for the rotation, you must have the ball in both hands as tight as possible to prevent it from slipping whilst you are rotating. There is no specific way to actually tell people how to 360 because it varies for just about everyone. It changes depending on what side you would rather jump from and what hand you would carry, cradle the ball with or in. The 360 alley-oop is possibly the most complex dunk for a mediocre or advanced level dunker. The rotation and the throw, the catch and the finish are all extremely difficult elements to get right all in the same run. It will take any dunker more than 10 tries to get the rotation and the throw correct, purely due to the difference in movements and remembering your surroundings. The tomahawk dunk is the final dunk I want to look at. This incorporated power, control and height. The ability to get high enough to touch the ball on your back with both hands and then capitalise whilst moving up can be extremely difficult for some. Especially when you think about the speed and the power you are executing the movement with. The key to the tomahawk is to never break eye contact with the rim. That way you know where you are on the court at all times. Thank you, and I hope you have learned how to execute a few more dunks by watching and listening.